<laughs> okay, so what's going on? Not an awful lot, to be honest. Um, it's not a great day for going sailing. Um, where we are on the anchorage is uh, pretty calm, but um, as soon as you sort of like go up the more uh, up the sound of mull or anything, um, then the weather, according to the apps anyway, is not the best. So a bit too frisky for my liking. <coughs> so um, I'm afraid to say it's going to be a domestic day on a salty lass, and I always start at the same place, doing the washing up. <laughs> The one thing you can say about uh, a small home, doesn't matter if it's a boat or a caravan or anything like that, it never takes very long to mess it up. But equally, it doesn't take you that long to tidy it up. So, um, a little bit of time and the place will be spick and span. <laughs> My galley's clean and um, domestic bliss is starting to um, appear, apart from the chart table, let's just not even mention that. <laughs> but um, one of the things that is annoying me on my domestic bliss is my knot picture that I made years ago. It has uh, got badly out of line and I think it's time that I... Um, mended it. I think what's happened is that uh, over the years the boat being thumped around by seas has just worked it loose hasn't it? It certainly has so I think we're going to get a bit of domestic bliss and sort My that domestic out. bliss is now in the aft cabin so I'm just moving backwards. <laughs> I'll leave uh, Beverly to the chart table. Let her do that. How are your knots holding up under the strain? <sighs> Well, they're not doing too badly. Um, obviously, it was the reef knot that was really bugging me, but a couple of the other ones had uh, had a bit of uh, wear as well. But my knot picture is of the eight knots um, that um, you learn for your competent crew course. And um, one of the things I've always wanted to discuss is not making knots themselves, because there's lots and lots of videos on how to make knots. You get it wrong, it's on camera now. <laughs> I was trying to be nice about it. Yellow. No, somebody wouldn't bloody listen, right. <gasps> yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, look at that, it's gone wrong. <laughs> but where you actually use these knots on a boat. I'd also like to add in which ones really get used, I mean like a rolling hitch we've used about three times in four years. Exactly, so that one's not used very often and um, whereas stopper knot, reef knots, clove hitch, I have used um, a sheet bend but again that's used very very rarely. I disagree. We, oh, go on, hang on. It's, it's not that we haven't used it, I've said we've used we it. We use it every time we use um, a particular mirroring tool because we sheet bend the line together to pull it through. That's right, we do. Okay, so I stand corrected. So, um, so what I thought we might as well do, soon as the weather's improved a bit outside, is actually show you where we use the knots on Salty Lass. As Beverly said, uh, the bowling is by far and away the most important knot that you have on a boat um, and we have these on our mooring lines and we put the uh, bowling on the uh, pontoon so that the loose, wire, loose um, mooring line is on our deck um, and then we can put it round the cleat and uh, do a big cheese as Bev says. Um, so that's what we use these for. Now the only time we have ever ever had an issue with the bowling was in disaster on day one. When Beverly put a bowling in a line um, that had a spring in it and um, the bowling came out. Once you've done that, as soon as the pressure comes off for any reason. Ah, oh, and it's gone. That's gone. That's so that's where I... That's where the dinghy. 
And that's where our dinghy went, wasn't it, Bev? That's where the dinghy went for a boat. And so this is not a good rope to have on a boat because you can't tie a knot in it that will hold because they just... So um, do check that your line is fine. The other knots that we use quite often are clove hitches and that's what we use to tie up our fenders. Um, either a clove hitch or a round turn and two half hitches. So that's what we do. Oh, and here's a, a stopper knot. Uh, this is actually on our traveller and uh, that's going to stop it running through a block. So very useful. Well, we're uh, anchored in uh, Loch Aileen and um, we've got a bit of um, bounce here in the loch, but um, going further out I can see more white caps and uh, mull is uh, vast, is disappearing as we speak, but our anchor ball is over there, so that's all good, we know where our anchor is. But we've got a backup plan, which is if um, the weather gets worse and we feel that there's a problem with our anchor, we're just going to go to the pontoon. But at least here on anchor, it's free. Uh, it just means it's not so pleasant. <laughs> so what are you doing, Bev? <sighs> there's a patch of blue up there. I mean, there's solid grit and there's a patch of blue over there and I, I, I'm in a situation that I, I don't much like, to be honest. I'm, I'm in the situation of what I sometimes call false hope. There's a bit of blue there, there's a bit of blue there, there's a big storm coming in. Maybe it'll go more westerly and things like that. Maybe it's going to be a bit calmer in here. We have a little window of opportunity. Should we take it? Should we stay on anchor? I don't know. Um, you get it like this and you think, no, we can stay here, this is okay. And then in six hours time you're being battered from side to side by 40 knocks and you think, damn, we should have moved the boat when we had that six hour window and you go, ah! And it's the, it's the regret for having let the opportunity slip because of false hope and it's coloured blue, the false hope, and it's up there and I can see it and we're due an absolute bonker of a storm coming along, uh, according to the forecast. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, tonight and tomorrow and should we move should we stay i mean the nearest marine is just over there should we move down to it um will our anchor be fine it's been fine so far we haven't moved an inch the the track on the um, on the anchor alarm is perfect just so many variables and i don't know what to do and i don't know if there is a right answer i think that when you're in these situations there's so much going on and you have such limited information that I don't know, if the, it's like picking a racehorse, one's going to win, there's 20 to pick from, which one is it? I have no idea. Well, another way to keep myself amused is to make things to eat. If you're always bored, eat. Admittedly it does pile the pounds on doing it, but, you know, the food tastes so good. So, uh, I'm going to make a pork mole. Um, I've been told by those of the know it doesn't have a, an accent on the end, so it's really just pork mole. To me, pork mole sounds like some sort of burrowing animal that you're eating, small and leathery, you know? Whereas pork mole sounds a bit more exciting to me, a bit more exotic and different. So on this boat, it's pork mole and I don't care what people tell me. So it's a very simple dish. It's tomatoes, onions, uh, bits of pork, um, secret spice mix, which I can't tell you about recipe up here. And, um, you know, we just put it in and let it sit in our old friend Mr. D for a couple of hours and then it comes out lovely and tender and we usually have this with rice. I've still got some more pork bellies in the fridge and I'll probably do something with them tomorrow like um, bellies and hoisin sauce or something like that. Well, <laughs> as you can see we're in the thermal gear and that's because this is summer in Scotland. <laughs> um, we're in Loch Eileen and we've been here for a couple of well, a few days now and it's been a while since we had any sunshine so all the heat has gone out of the air. Um, in case you're wondering why the boat is swinging wildly it's because we are at anchor we're getting gusts and it's blowing the boat around and we thought we'd take this opportunity to talk about anchoring and some of the things that we have found anchoring out um, and also the things that because there's such a lot to think about when you are anchoring um that sometimes when it first it feels daunting initially i think mm -hmm. 
Um, now, I will be honest, I do not think that we have got it completely sourced. Hey, uh, we've just sat out 35 knot gusts over two nights and we haven't moved a dicky bird, so I think we've got it pretty well sourced. Yeah, but I still think there's lots to learn and I think um, if you uh, always have this idea that you've got more to learn, then I think you're not going to be doing too badly. Well, one of the things I do want to talk about in this particular location is that for once we have our anchor ball out and it's partly to mark our anchor because when we arrived here there was other boats around us uh, but partly also this area of Loch Aileen is a mixture of sand oh, sorry of mud and rock and we're worried about the anchor filing on rock and getting caught and <laughs> I love the gusts but go on <laughs> that was a good gust wasn't it it was um, so yeah, so we're worried about the um, the anchor getting caught. So we've fitted the tripping line. The idea of that line is that the anchor is being pulled backwards and if there's a rock that it's stuck on, then pulling the anchor forward using the tripping line is supposed to help you get it out. The anchor has held so well in the gusts that I'm just concerned that it's jammed on something down there. We have not moved a dicky bird. And we have had pretty hefty gusts, I have to be honest. The anchor alarm did go off this morning. It did, but I think it was because we were at the end of our scope. I agree, we were right, when you look at the pattern of where we're swinging on the anchor, on the anchor alarm, um, we were right on the outer edge of our, our range and we think what happened was a big gust literally just lifted the chain and pushed the boat back right to the point where the anchor alarm went, oops, we're, we're at the uh, preset limit, beep, 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 time to go. But then a few minutes later we moved back in again as the chain dropped so that was mm. the end of the anchor alarm now by the way i'm just going to tell you now i think we've got a big gust coming look at the water over there yeah okay now what we're using uh, at the moment for our anchor ball is we are using sinking rope coupled with two very big shackles now initially uh, we used floating line didn't we Beverly? That didn't end well. It did not end well. It looked like this. <laughs> On the end of this yellow line is our mooring ball underneath the prop. We're being towed. <sighs> um, yeah, we thought that the floating line would be easy to pick up etc but in the end... We thought it wouldn't go under the boat turns out if you drive over it it does go under the boat so whereas now because we've got the shackles the shackles are such a um, in such a position that the shackles are deeper than our keel yeah that's uh, definitely deeper than our propeller and the deeper than our propeller now we have used it quite a few times and so far uh, it's worked out quite well it has so that's good um, I think um, we don't use the tripping line all the time. Um, mud and sand, we don't use it. Um, but obviously rock, shale, and also when the seabed, we're worried about the seabed for loose moorings and things of that nature. Yeah, if, if there's been a mooring field in the place you're anchoring, there might be old ground tackle down there. You just don't know. Or there could be some old rope or wire stretched across a disused cable. Could be anything. Mm. It's just not worth the trouble. No, so that's when we would use our uh, tripping wire. Our normal scope that we aim for is about 5 to 1. We've seen the RYA manual say that you know 3 to 1, 4 to 1 is okay, uh, 7 to 1 for stormy weather. We generally aim for 5 because the arithmetic's simple. Every metre of depth that we anchor in, we put out 5 metres of scope. Yeah. Um, as soon as we get to the uh, allocation of chain, that's mm. actually when we put on our snubber. Mm -hmm. so that um, and then we put this uh, the snubber down now our snubber is about five meters in itself um, so it just gives us an extra little bit of um, give um, in the amount of chain that we have down can you see the uh, hill over there on the mole? yes you see what's coming down it yeah it's called the rain <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like uh, in a couple of minutes time we are going to have a mother of all rain showers and we'll probably have a giant squall in front of it because that seems to be how they rock around here doesn't it you get a, a huge squall just preceding the rain buckets down and then afterwards it's quite calm for a bit mm. yeah so yeah oh 
before um, we get rained oh. on, get rained on. Uh, one of the things that um, we also look for on the shoreline is lots of trees. Yeah, if you look behind us, you will see we are surrounded by trees. And the reason for that is trees are extremely good at breaking up the wind. Um, these trees are higher than our mast, so any wind coming from over that way will be degraded down and will be gentler than being on the other side of that hill. Now, one Sadly thing... for us, the majority of the wind is coming straight up the lock. So... <laughs> So not so good on that. <laughs> One thing that can cause you issues though is straight sides. Now we were actually in a marina when we had um, a straight side. Right, not a straight side. What you mean is a flat slope with no a, trees on it. Thank you. A flat slope with no trees on like it. Like that one over there on the mole. Yes. Because then the wind can just roll down the hill and it picks up speed as it does so it slams into you at the bottom. Mm. Now we had um, that when we were actually in a, in a marina at um, Lock Boylesdale. At Lock Boylesdale, yeah. and that was quite interesting. Mm. Um, it wasn't quite catabatic, but uh, it was it, pretty it, close. close. Uh, one, the main thing you really, really want in an anchorage, in my opinion, is reduced sea state. You can put up with nearly anything in terms of wind; it just blows you around a bit. But it doesn't usually do the boat too much harm. But lots and lots of waves hitting you from odd angles, those make it very unpleasant, very rolly. But in here, there's nowhere for the waves to build up. So even though the wind is coming straight up the loch, um, we're not getting a bad sea state here. It's been quite calm, all things considered. For the winds we've had, it's been very calm. Mm. Yeah, I agree with Beverly. Sea state is by far and away um, the worst thing because we've been out in what 42 knot winds we had 35 here this morning we had 35 here this morning but yeah. the sea state was fine and, there, and therefore we slept through it <laughs> well not completely we were awake for it happening but yeah yeah but uh, I think the rain state is about to imp is about to degrade massively so yeah um, well <laughs> sh shall we get underneath I agree. Uh, One of the advantages of not doing anything on a day like this is you've got plenty of time to prepare dinner. So mm. um, we're going to have uh, hot and sour soup and uh, sweet and sour pork. Mm. Because why not? Shall we get in before we get dunked on? Absolutely, go. Come on then.